so very very good morning back out again with RB and we're out test riding this this is the red Michigan 125 in Euro 5 slightly different color so very very bright red this is going out to customer Craig and this is just the first one of two ride videos can do a little bit more in depth on these new Michigans so this is just the first one of the two-part series for Craig now he opted for a red one and it was the only red one that we could find anywhere red ones are actually out selling the blacks at the moment everybody seems to like these red Michigans something slightly different and Faye from Tins on Tour had a red one as well and she loved her Michigan absolutely beautiful so what we're going to do we're going to change the route up today slightly because everybody's oh you're always going up and down the dual carriageway so we're going to change the route slightly i've been out and done the dual carriageway i've done the hill climb and we've come in a little bit later and we're going to do some urban mileage what is this like around town absolutely beautiful nod nod that's uh, looks like simon might not be never know <coughs> But I've got a nod and that is one thing about the bikers the biker nod do you nod another bike of course you do yeah it doesn't matter whether it's one two five fifty learner or a big BMW GS tour give a nod to everybody just acknowledges welcome to the, uh, the brother and sisterhood of biking good to see you out riding safe that's what the nods basically for hello mate how you doing have a good day I tend to nod everybody I'm like Churchill normally on bike meets nod 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 but uh, it's all good fun but we're out on this Michigan now the Euro 5 Michigans are selling like hotcakes at the moment yes they have gone up in price from the uh, the Euro 4s but I love these new Euro 5s still as talky as ever remember it's still a 125 you're not gonna be breaking the world land speed record in one of these but uh, nice high bars it corners absolutely beautiful like it's on rails at times the gearing is absolutely perfect on it you can do second gear pullaways not that I'd suggest you know how to do second gear, gear pullaways you're going to be burning a clutch out so unless you know how to do a second gear pullaway stick to first but most of the old bikes use the pullaway in second gear but round town 30 mile an hour nice high upright position you back is bolt upright you're not going to get a bad back ride in one of these seat is lovely and comfortable as I said on my last Michigan video that I did you could ride this for a good couple of hours and not get that numb bum like you do with some of the hard seats now obviously uh, LXR has got a hard seat on it LXS isn't bad but the Michigan is lovely and soft and it soaks up the bumps with that suspension it soaks up the bumps absolutely lovely does the job and as I always say does what it says on the tin for 2390 this is a nice little bike so for two and a half grand you got a nice bit of kit you can get a helmet out of the change as well and a uh, couple of questions I'm going to answer quickly while we're into this urban route what bike gear do you tend to ride now I've got my bike jackets on today because it is exceptionally warm morning so I've just got two normal, I'm actually wearing, I wear two jackets, I don't just wear the one, I wear two jackets, extra bit of protection. But underneath my, uh, my jackets, I tend to wear Nomex armour, which is basically motocross armour, all good. I've got my Kevy jeans on, and a pair of Doc Martens. And people say, why don't you wear bike boots, because I would be changing or wearing bike boots all day. So what I tend to do, is leave me Doc Martins on if I'm riding a 125 if I'm taking a bigger bike out then I'll switch up to my big bike boots but on a 125 as long as you've got ankle protection that is good so decent pair of jeans don't just put your tracksuit train and uh, tracksuit uh, trousers on a pair of trainers and a t-shirt you've got one lot of skin try and protect it so that is a simple reason why you should get yourself some bike wear as we always say, at Gap, all the gear, all the time. 
Now, obviously, I was out on Sunday, and it was exceptionally hot on Sunday, and I had my full textile suit on. I had the trousers on, my boots, my jacket, and just a t-shirt underneath. I absolutely cooked. I got back and I had to peel my jackets off because I was that covered in sweat. People say, oh yeah, but if you had something lighter on, yes, but in the event of you dropping that bike, you've got some protection. I would rather sweat my buckets off than lose a layer of skin. So all the gear, all the time, people. So that answers that question about bike protection. What's the best to buy? Whatever you can afford, but at least get yourself something. Even if it's cheap, it's still some protection. Helmets, though, I would say spend at least 100 quid on crash helmet. You can get some good ones for about 80, 90 quid. Avoid those ones that you find on eBay for about 35. I wouldn't use them as head protection. I'd use them as a plant pot. But that's first test ride over on the Michigan. We are 10 miles in. So that's the first lot of the test mileage up. A little bit of an urban route this morning and a bit of a chimp wag. We should be doing a more in-depth ride video on the next one, on this red one. Because a lot of people have said, what does it look like? Can we get up close and personal? Can we have a look around the engine? So we'll bring the Insta out on the next one. We'll strap it to the bike and show you what it looks like using the Insta. That'll be on the next ride video in a couple of days. But whatever you're doing, guys, be well, ride safe. And as always, it's a big goodbye from me.